This video is for educational purposes. Detroit is the most populous city in the U.S. state of Michigan. It is the largest U.S. city on the United States-Canada border and the seat of government of Wayne County. Detroit had a population of 639,111 at the 2020 census, making it the 29th most populous city in the United States. The Metro Detroit area, home to 4.3 million people, is the second largest in the Midwest after the Chicago metropolitan area and the 14th largest in the United States. A significant cultural center, Detroit is known for its contributions to music, art, architecture and design, in addition to its historical automotive background. Subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell so you get notified each time we upload a new video. In 1701, Antoine de la Motte Cadillac and Alphonse de Tonti founded Fort Pontchartrain du Détroit. During the late 19th and early 20th century, it became an important industrial hub at the center of the Great Lakes region. The city's population rose to be the fourth largest in the nation by 1920, after New York City, Chicago and Philadelphia, with the expansion of the automotive industry in the early 20th century. The Detroit River became the busiest commercial hub in the world as it carried over 65 million tons of shipping commerce each year. In the late 20th century, Detroit entered a state of urban decay which has continued to the present, as a result of industrial restructuring, the loss of jobs in the auto industry, and rapid suburbanization. Since reaching a peak of 1.85 million at the 1950 census, Detroit's population has declined by more than 65%. In 2013, Detroit became the largest U.S. city to file for bankruptcy, which it successfully exited in December 2014. Detroit is a port on the Detroit River, one of the four major straits that connect the Great Lakes system to the St. Lawrence Seaway. The city anchors the second-largest regional economy in the Midwest and the 14th largest in the United States. Detroit is best known as the center of the U.S. automotive industry, and the big three auto manufacturers, General Motors, Ford, and Stellantis North America, Chrysler, are all headquartered in Metro Detroit. The Detroit Metropolitan Airport is among the most important hub airports in the United States. Detroit and its neighboring Canadian city Windsor constitute the second busiest international crossing in North America, after San Diego, Tijuana. Detroit's diverse culture has had both local and international influence, particularly in music, with the city giving rise to the genres of Motown and techno and playing an important role in the development of jazz, hip-hop, rock, and punk. The rapid growth of Detroit in its boom years resulted in a globally unique stock of architectural monuments and historic places. Since the 2000s, conservation efforts have managed to save many architectural pieces and achieve several large-scale revitalizations, including the restoration of several historic theaters and entertainment venues, high-rise renovations, new sports stadiums, and a riverfront revitalization project. An increasingly popular tourist destination, Detroit receives 16 million visitors per year. In 2015, Detroit was named a City of Design by UNESCO, the first U.S. city to receive that designation. Time named Detroit as one of the 50 world's greatest places of 2022 to explore. Detroit is named after the Detroit River, connecting Lake Huron with Lake Erie. The name comes from the French word Detroit meaning strait, as the city was situated on a narrow passage of water linking the two lakes. The river was known as Le Detroit du Lac Erie in French, which means the Strait of Lake Erie. In the historical context, the strait included the St. Clair River, Lake St. Clair, and the Detroit River. Paley Indians inhabited areas near Detroit as early as 11,000 years ago including the culture referred to as the Mound Builders. By the 17th century, the region was inhabited by Huron, Odawa, Potawatomi, and Iroquois peoples. The area is known by the Anishinaabe people as Wayaidnam, translating to, where the water curves around. The first Europeans did not penetrate into the region and reach the Straits of Detroit until French missionaries and traders worked their way around the Iroquois League, with whom they were at war in the 1630s. The Huron and Neutral people held the north side of Lake Erie until the 1650s, when the Iroquois pushed them and the Erie people away from the lake and its beaver-rich feeder streams in the Beaver Wars of 1649 to 1655. By the 1670s, the war-weakened Iroquois laid claim to as far south as the Ohio River Valley in northern Kentucky as hunting grounds, and had absorbed many other Iroquoian peoples after defeating them in war. For the next hundred years, virtually no British or French action was contemplated without consultation with the Iroquois or consideration of their likely response. When the French and Indian War evicted the Kingdom of France from Canada, it removed one barrier to American colonists migrating west. 
British negotiations with the Iroquois would both prove critical and lead to a crown policy limiting settlements below the Great Lakes and west of the Alleghenies. Many colonial American would-be migrants resented this restraint and became supporters of the American Revolution. The 1778 raids and resultant 1779 decisive Sullivan expedition reopened the Ohio country to westward emigration, which began almost immediately. By 1800 white settlers were pouring westwards. On July 24, 1701, the French explorer Antoine de la Muff Cadillac, with his lieutenant Alphonse de Tonti and more than a hundred other settlers, began constructing a small fort on the north bank of the Detroit River. Cadillac named the settlement Fort Pontchartrain du Detroit, after Louis Philippos, Comte de Pontchartrain, Secretary of State of the Navy under Louis XIV. Saint Anne de Detroit was founded on July 26 and is the second oldest continuously operating Roman Catholic parish in the United States. France offered free land to colonists to attract families to Detroit, when it reached a population of 800 in 1765, it became the largest European settlement between Montreal and New Orleans, both also French settlements, in the former colonies of New France and La Louisiana, respectively. By 1773, after the addition of Anglo-American settlers, the population of Detroit was 1,400. By 1778, its population reached 2,144 and it was the third largest city in what was known as the province of Quebec since the British takeover of French colonies following their victory in the Seven Years' War. The region's economy was based on the lucrative fur trade, in which numerous Native American people had important roles as trappers and traders. Today the flag of Detroit reflects its French colonial heritage. Descendants of the earliest French and French-Canadian settlers formed a cohesive community, who gradually were superseded as the dominant population after more Anglo-American settlers arrived in the early 19th century with American westward migration. Living along the shores of Lake St. Clair and south to Monroe and downriver suburbs, the ethnic French Canadians of Detroit, also known as Muskrat French in reference to the fur trade, remain a subculture in the region in the 21st century. During the French and Indian War, 1754 to 63, the North American front of the Seven Years' War between Britain and France, British troops gained control of the settlement in 1760 and shortened its name to Detroit. Several regional Native American tribes, such as the Potawatomi, Ojibwe and Huron, launched Pontiac's War in 1763 and laid siege to Fort Detroit but failed to capture it. In defeat, France ceded its territory in North America east of the Mississippi to Britain following the war. Following the American Revolutionary War and the establishment of the United States as an independent country, Britain ceded Detroit along with other territories in the area under the Jay Treaty which established the northern border with its colony of Canada. The Great Fire of 1805 destroyed most of the Detroit settlement, which had primarily buildings made of wood. One stone fort, a river warehouse, and brick chimneys of former wooden homes were the sole structures to survive. Of the 600 Detroit residents in this area, none died in the fire. From 1805 to 1847, Detroit was the capital of Michigan as a territory and as a state. William Hull, the United States commander at Detroit, surrendered without a fight to British troops and their Native American allies during the War of 1812 in the Siege of Detroit, believing his forces were vastly outnumbered. The Battle of Frenchtown was part of a U.S. effort to retake the city, and U.S. troops suffered their highest fatalities of any battle in the war. This battle is commemorated at River Raisin National Battlefield Park south of Detroit in Monroe County. Detroit was recaptured by the United States later that year. The settlement was incorporated as a city in 1815. As the city expanded, a radial geometric street plan developed by Chief Justice Augustus B. Woodward was followed, featuring grand boulevards as in Paris. In 1817, Woodward went on to establish the Catholepistemiad, or University of Michigania in the city. Intended to be a centralized system of schools, libraries, and other cultural and scientific institutions for the Michigan Territory, the Catholepistemiad evolved into the modern University of Michigan. Prior to the American Civil War, the city's access to the Canada-U.S. border made it a key stop for refugee slaves gaining freedom in the north along the Underground Railroad. Many went across the Detroit River to Canada to escape pursuit by slave catchers. An estimated 20,000 to 30,000 African-American refugees settled in Canada. George de Baptiste was considered to be the president of the Detroit Underground Railroad, William Lambert the vice president or secretary, and Laura Smith Haviland the superintendent. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell so you get notified each time we upload a new video. See you in the next one.